everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. For today's project, let's blow some color around. Specifically, some pinata alcohol inks. And how about we make a somewhat wispy, ethereal piece with a little extra. I've pulled out the colors Senorita Magenta, Passion Purple, Baja Blue, Sunbright Yellow. And for that little extra, a little shimmer, let's throw in a touch of rich gold. The substrate for today will be the back of Kirkland photo paper. The back of this particular photo paper behaves just like Yupo paper for a lot less money. This pack of 150 sheets of 8.5 by 11 runs around $30 depending on where you get it. I've got links for everything I'm, I'll be using today in the description box below the video, by the way. A viewer named Pattig in Canada says that she has had similar success with the glossy photo paper from Staples. So if you're in Canada and can get this, try that. And another viewer, Violet Crumble 57, who's in Australia, says that she's had similar luck with Woolworth's home brand photo paper. So if you're Aussie, you can maybe try that. Now, since this surface, the back of the photo paper, has a teeny bit of tooth, I can get away with using 91% alcohol as my thinning agent. But if you're going to be working on something slick like glass or tile, I strongly recommend adding at least 50% Claro extender to your alcohol to maintain the binding power of your ink as you thin it. Otherwise, your work will rub off much too easily from glass or tile or anything slick like that, possibly before you even get a chance to seal your work. Like your inks, the Claro has a binder in it to let the inks stick to anything. Isopropyl alcohol has no binder, so when you thin your inks, it actually makes it a little harder for those inks to stick. But again, since my surface has a little bit of tooth, I don't have that problem. Now, I thin my inks prior to use on substrates like Yupo or Duralar or photo paper, especially if I'm after an ethereal look. If I use the ink straight out of the bottle on a substrate like this, it's gonna stain that substrate and it won't allow me to get the wispy look I love, which requires going back down to an unstained white surface. So like if I put a drop down straight out of the bottle and then blow it away or try to move it around, I'll be able to move the ink, but you'll see a mark where the original drop was. And when you're after that ethereal look, you don't want those marks. But if you thin your ink first, you don't have that issue. I thin my inks with 91% or higher isopropyl alcohol. The amount of ink I add to the alcohol varies from ink to ink. But on average, I start out with about 10 drops of ink per half ounce of alcohol and I go from there. This is a one ounce bottle. So I'd fill the bottle halfway, add those 10 drops of ink, test it out on some scrap piece of whatever surface I wanna use and see how strong that ink looks. If it's a little too pale, I might add more ink. If it's a little too bright, I might add more alcohol. So that's kind of how I start out. Again, if you're working on tile or glass, I strongly recommend doing 50% alcohol, 50% Claro, and then add your ink so that this can stick to your surface. And lastly, I'm going to be using my airbrush for this piece, but you can achieve a very similar look with a straw or tubing from a fish tank or aquarium. A blow dryer will work too, but it's gonna make larger overall areas. I've been loving the look that my friend Sharon Lindley 
has been getting with her airbrush. She gets these little pretty wispy small patterns. So it inspired me to pull mine out and see if I can get those small ones too. <laughs> make sure to check out her channel so that you can get even more fun ideas for playing with your airbrush and some ink. Alrighty, let's do this. I'm going to start out my piece with a little thinned Baja Blue. All I'm gonna do is put some down and start blowing it toward the center. I'm not trying to get any particular pattern. I'm just trying to get some color down and get it toward the center. much what I needed to start out. So what I want now is to sort of decide, do I want this piece to stay blue, which would be very pretty, all blue with a little bit of gold, or do I want to add a couple other little colors here and there? So I think I'm going to throw in a little bit of Senorita Magenta, just in a couple of spots, just to add a little variety. And when I do that, the blend of the two colors will be a beautiful purple. And now that I'm starting to get color out toward here, I'm gonna start taking some straight alcohol to start my fade. As I sort of fade in, I'm trying to decide what sort of shape do I want the center to take? Do I want it to be circular? I don't really want it to look like a flower per se. So maybe I just want sort of a swath of darkness in the center that has sort of a fade radiating out from it. So how about I aim for that? I'm trying to avoid out here are too many darker lines. I, I want some dark lines in the center, but not so much out here. So I want to soften those. So I'm using the airbrush to direct my lines. I'm thinking about the lines that I'm forming as I blow the air. Yeah, like I like the darkness that's happening here and here. That's working very nicely. But I've lost some of the magenta. So I'm going to try to introduce some of that again. And then 
out here I want more of a fade so just coming in to create that and I'm doing that by putting alcohol down and blowing it away it's a little dark Maybe a little magenta there. I love this out here. And I like much of this. I'm not terribly fond of what's happening here. So how about we try to do something about that? Yeah, I do like this now. Do something about here. It's a little less soft than I think I want. And I'm not putting down a lot of alcohol because if I put down a lot, then it's just going to rush over here and, and disturb everything here. So I'm putting down just a drop or two just to soften my fade. And the reason you see me blowing back this way is so that I don't get too many spindly fingers. I don't necessarily want them for this piece either. Like these guys, you know, like these things. Okay. I think I'm overall happy with my initial shape. So I'm gonna stop there. And now I want to work on it, to embellish it, to give it a little oomph, a little something something, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, it's really pretty and I could stop right here, frame this, and I'd be perfectly happy. But it wouldn't be a fun enough video. We gotta do more, right? <laughs> so, how about we add a little bit of gold? Now, adding gold can be very tricky because it doesn't behave like the other inks. When you put the metallics down, they kind of come down like a glob, and then when you blow it around, they still stay like a glob in one point, and then they spread out a little bit, so you really need to put it down in a wet pile, and it gets really tricky. And if you're putting it down on sort of like a ethereal-looking piece like this, it can be overwhelming and it can also look almost muddy on top of a very light area. So I'm going to show you a super easy way to get some gold into your piece and have it look organic. So I'm going to take some of my gold and you want to make sure that you shake your metallics really well until you hear that ball. Then you know that you've got it well shaken not stirred. <laughs> and I'm going to drop a few drops in here. And then I want a paintbrush that really comes to a nice point. A really good point. And then I'm going to look for the dark areas of my painting. And I'm going to look for the lines that are already formed by the painting that happened organically. And with the very tip of my brush, I'm just going to paint along those lines. And what's great about this is that a crooked line is perfect. You don't want straight lines. You want your lines to be as crooked and tree branch-like as possible. And another really wonderful thing about the metallics is that you can let them dry once they dry and then paint over it to brighten your line. Unlike the other inks that 
will just bloom if you paint over them. The metallics are kind of good. They let you paint layers and just get a brighter and brighter gold as you do that. And again, I'm not trying to make straight lines. I actually want my line to be fat in some areas and super thin in other areas. And ideally, I'd like it to taper to a very fine line as it works its way out toward the faded areas. So it can be nice and thicker toward the center, but getting a little finer as it works its way out. Very fine at the end. And I'm just following the lines that are already in the painting. Just along sort of the borders between colors. So if you're not comfortable designing, the painting already did it for you. Just do what the painting tells you. <laughs> paint right along those lines. So I'm gonna paint along this line right here and I'll connect it to this one that I had put down before so that it looks like there are branches and marbling sort of coming out. Now, there's no line between here and here, but I'll make one for now. And again, I can go over to make it a little brighter. You may need to stir your ink every now and then to get the particles back up because they will sink to the bottom. Let me sort of show you how that's going so far. There you go. You can sort of see it there. So I'm going to do a little bit more of that and then I'll be back. All right, so I've made myself a few lines. I kind of like it and and I think it looks pretty good. The another advantage of doing this is let's say you've got like a little blemish or something that you just don't like. It didn't come out quite the way you wanted. Like I'm not nuts about these little finger little things here. Like this one and that one. There was one here that I kind of hid with one of these lines. So I'm going to hide this one. If one of these is gone, the other one probably won't bother me. So I'm just going to take my little line, my one of my branches, and go right over it. And now it's gone. All gone, like it was never there. And then I'll just taper this line out. And then something else that I like to do to make these lines look a little more organic is I look for intersections of lines, like like right here where there's a V. And what I do is sort of round out that V, fill it in a little bit like that. And what that does, I think, is it makes your lines not all look the same. They look more like they just happened in the painting. Here's another one of those sort of V's. And I'm just filling in the V a little bit. I'll do it here too. Not necessarily to every single one, but here and there. And if you don't have the metallic alcohol ink, you can certainly use like a gold paint pen um, or even gold acrylic paint, I guess. But if you do have the metallic ink, there's really nothing as gold and sparkly as this stuff. The pinata gold is unbelievably beautifully gold and their brass is really pretty too the brass almost looks like a slightly rose gold not fully rose gold but a little in that direction so that it's super pretty 
but I'm using the Rich Gold because that's the one that comes in the Exciter pack, so I know a lot of people have it. And as your ink starts to dry, if you're thinking it's getting a little chunky feeling, then add one drop of alcohol. Don't add a lot because then you'll get this whole thing to start blooming on you when you paint. You don't want that. You want your lines to stay nice and thin. And then something else you can do for fun, if you want this part, this is totally optional, is just for fun, I'm going to, within an area like like this, I'm just gonna make like little dots. Just teeny bitty, itty bitty, little eatsy weensy little dots. Like that, if you can see them. And that's just for interest. Again, this is entirely optional and only if you like the look. So I'm just doing that just, again, to add a little something extra. I won't do it everywhere, just in a couple spots, just so that your eye has something to stop on and say, ooh, what's that? And again, these little dots help you hide little blemishes too. And this is all so super easy to do and gives your painting such a look of a little extra. And your dots can be different sizes. And you may take your dots out further in different areas. Like here, I only have them going from here to here. But here, I'm going to take them starting here and take them all the way out to here. I'm going to take this line out a little further and then add dots further out. So that's sort of the look. Do a little filling in here, maybe there, and maybe a couple dots over there. I think I'm going to stop there. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good just the way it is. So you can certainly go further and have more fun with your lines. For me, I'm going to stop there. I will put links to everything I used in the description box, including these cute little silicone cups. I love these because they don't tip over. I mean, they can if you go out of your way, but they're really stable and they're easy to clean. They're totally reusable and are awesome in that they, because they're so narrow and rounded, they hold your ink and keep it wet for a little bit longer than if you use it in a paint palette, for example. So I really recommend these. My teeny little brushes I get from eBay, super cheap. I can get 10 of these for less than $2. I'll put a link for that too. Or of course you can buy your brushes um, anywhere. These are, you don't need really high quality brushes for alcohol ink. In fact, I wouldn't use high quality brushes for alcohol ink because it'll just mess with your brushes. So inexpensive brushes that come to a fine point like this are ideal for a little detail work like this. For pictures of everything I used, go to kit.com slash Miriam's Nature and look for the alcohol ink kit. I'll put a link for that in the description box below too, because then you'll be able to see exactly what it is you're um, getting because there's a picture for each individual item. It's really a practical way to find everything you need. I love it. So I hope that that helps you all. If you got something out of this, let me know in the comments. Tell me what other things you wanna know about with alcohol ink or resin or acrylic pouring. I love hearing from you. And I thank all of you who are using my Amazon links to do your shopping. It's really helping my channel and I'm so grateful. 
and I hope to get a thumbs up from you if you enjoyed this and definitely subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Let your creative nature shine. See you later. Bye now.